the science behind breathing and why it works so well to do many things, calm us down, lower our blood pressure, lower cortisol levels. This is the video for you. Now, there are many opinions of how breathing works and how it should work. And like most things, people will become divided and try to conquer that their opinion is correct. I don't know. I don't know who's correct. One option would be to try all of them and see which one seems to resonate with you. That seems to be, in my opinion, probably the best thing to do. I can tell you what I do. I can tell you what I've taught patients. I can tell you what seems to work. And I can tell you also what seems to compl overly complicate things to where patients are cross-eyed trying to figure out what the heck you're talking about. And in retrospect, it is kind of funny that we're all arguing over the proper way to breathe. Let me tell you about the science behind it and why maybe some of those people that think they know what they know and that they're correct, may, it may not make sense. So let's talk about it. Number one, should you inhale through the nose or inhale through the mouth? Good question, glad you asked. Thanks for playing. Try inhaling through the nose as deeply as you possibly can, why? Because it seems as though most of the research says that breathing through your nose can help your body stimulate more nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a gas inside our blood vessels that help dilate our blood vessels and make them more pliable. And that has some beneficial effects. Number one, it lowers your blood pressure, which is primarily the reason why people want to do this. If you want, you can breathe in through your nose. Now, should you exhale through your, no your nose or should you exhale through your mouth? I have personally found with patients that it's very relaxing to exhale through your mouth. It doesn't appear as though exhaling through your mouth gives you any more significant benefit in terms of nitric oxide, so why do it? Also, it's a refreshing, kind of relaxing way to just drop the shoulders, let everything go, let everything chill out, and you just, just relax, let it out. So let's talk about the muscles of inhalation. The most commonly known would be the diaphragm and that is below your rib cage between all your internal organs and the lungs. When the muscle, it's a dome-shaped muscle like this, so when it contracts, it pulls down, creating a negative pressure, and thus it's easy to inhale. When you do diaphragmatic breathing or breathing through the diaphragm, your belly will expand as if your guts are hanging out or if you're getting fatter. And Many people believe that's the only muscle that you should use when you breathe. And that makes some sense with their arguments, but it really doesn't because there are other muscles of inhalation. Only breathing with one muscle actually is kind of like trying to lift something with only your bicep. It's, it doesn't make any sense because there you have your bicep, you have your brachialis, you have a brachioradialis, and those muscles must be used when you lift something. Just like with breathing, there are other muscles and for some reason people like to talk about diaphragmatic breathing as if it's the only muscle that's being used, but there are other muscles such as the muscles of inspiration and expiration called intercostal muscles. These are muscles between the ribs, costal meaning rib, inter meaning between, so you have intercostal muscles and you have some that are shaped in this direction and some that are shaped in that direction. And these muscles actually lift the rib cage. They expand the ribs. So think of your ribs as like this. And then all of a sudden when you inhale, the ribs expand, allowing again, more negative pressure. And when those muscles contract, they will actually bring more air into your lungs. Likewise, there's muscles of expiration where they do the opposite, it's easy easy to be understood. There are other muscles called the scalene muscles, which help lift the first couple ribs at the top. These are the muscles, and there are some others, but I don't want to get this into an, an anatomy lesson. But use all the muscles of your body to breathe. When you inhale, at first the belly might start going out, but your 
whole thoracic cage will expand. And I tell patients that when they inhale, think of themselves as the Marvel character, Thor. Raise your chest, expand your chest, expand your belly, and use all the muscles of inspiration. The people that tell you to only diaphragmatic breathe are trying to do so to try to calm you down. Because very often when people hyperventilate, they tend to breathe just with their upper chest and no belly breathing. You can get more air into your lungs if you use all the muscles. So I suggest to inhale as deeply as humanly possible, and that usually involves all the muscles. So there's that. When you take deep breaths, your body will have a stimulation of the parasympathetic nervous system if you do it slowly. And what this is, is there's two basically autonomic nervous system components. There's the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. The parasympathetic relaxes us and calms us down. The sympathetic stimulates and wakes us up. There's a number of other physiological things that happen, but for now, just keep this in mind, we're gonna stick to the breathing. Deep, slow breathing tends to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. This has beneficial effects. Number one, reduces cortisol. Number two, it relaxes us. Number three, it lowers our blood pressure or helps stabilize it. These are the benefits of deep breathing. So if you're interested in more information on deep breathing, I'll put some links down below here in these boxes. If you cannot see the boxes, it's because your phone is upright. Turn the phone sideways and you'll you'll see the boxes. And you can watch some other videos detailing how exactly to breathe and how to lower your blood pressure. I hope you find them beneficial.